Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Uh, William has a question. Of, he says, uh, in a dollar bull market, how do you feel that the platinum group metals will fare? Uh, we think we think we see it two ways. In the begin throughout the first half, and, and again, this is our this is you know our crystal ball. We're gazing into our crystal ball here and guessing, but we see the gold doing badly in the first part of the year. Uh, the metals and you know gold from a from the more industrial metals. I think it's a different story. And again, we don't focus that much on the industrial metals. But gold, we think, is going to have some competition on rates because we think you're going to see rates increase um, in, across from the Asia central banks early on in the year. We think the U.S., um, if, if it doesn't hike, you're going to see the yields push up anyway just from the market. Um, so we, we think gold's going to get some competition, and we think you're going to see it fall relative to the dollar that in play. But towards the end of the year, we happen to think we're going to get back into a pretty nasty deflationary situation um, because of you know these breakdowns that that we think can happen if the China bubble pops, we think gold actually can can act well in that environment and can take uh, some of that role as a safe haven and actually do well in the deflationary environment because rates are going to come down and you're not going to have that competition. There are going to be some people that just don't want to put money into the U.S. or into the dollar, and we think gold can play that role towards uh, the second half of the year. That's our that's our guess. So, Jack, I guess you're a believer in deleveraging and it's not done yet. Absolutely not. So my second part of the question would be, uh, if that's the case, are you looking, if you were to pick two or three currencies that you really don't like at all, uh, maybe I'm going to guess a couple. One would be the Australian, one might be the New Zealand, and maybe the Euro. I mean, I guess it's two different things, commodities versus uh, the European currency. Yeah, but it, 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 Different time frames. <clears throat> um, the euro is number one, of course. Um, Hungarian foreign, we think, is going to get des get destroyed. Um, okay. We we think uh, Australia. We think the commodity currencies, if we get the, if we get the continued growth and healing, so to speak, in the first half of the year, will do fine. But if once China gets in trouble, and you see it today, even a hint of it, once if if those China bubbles start to break, we want to just be short the commodity currencies all the way down. Uh, they're going to come down a ton, um, you know, because commodities will break. And already, as that chart I showed you, you see the the huge extension of the Australian dollar relative to its fundamentals, which right. really are commodities. So that that's our, you know, that's one we would be on. Um, and in other in other, you know, minor currencies like you know South African rand, we think would would get destroyed too in in that type of environment. Uh, Japanese yen. Um, we think that if if we get some, the yen is acting a little bit you know well on risk in here, but if we get again if we get some growth in here and we see interest rates start to go up, the Bank of Japan is not going to budge. We think the Japanese yen in the first half of the year or in the next several months uh, will start to weaken. Again, if there's not a major risk event going on right now, but it, if we get through this, we think the yen will start to weaken and take over the carry trade currency for a while. But again, once China breaks, we think the yen will, will do okay. So we don't like the yen. Um, you know, once we get through this period in here, short, which we think is a near-term move, uh, we think the yen could weaken. We think the yen is very overdone. Jack, what theme would make you wrong? I mean, I, I know that you think about this all the time. You know, yep. What would make you wrong? And it, um, Joan says, do you think the dollar will fall in the short term because of ample liquidity still available? So I just paraphrase this question. Say, you know, it, would it be that more good news out of China um, would that be it, or more, some better news out of Europe would make the dollar uh, a bit weaker, or is it just terrible news here in the states? Well, what we we're, we told you we watched the front end of the curve, you know, the Fed funds and the LIBOR, and we watched the two years. We watched that very closely. What is very clear? What's going to make us wrong is if we don't see, uh, if we see continued a slight rebound in the global economy, as you said, China's still doing well, and we think they can. Um, do well because the liquidity is still flowing, and there's a lot of money flowing to China expecting a one-off uh, revaluation um, that we don't think is going to happen, but that's a lot of liquidity that they're getting uh, externally that they don't have to generate internally at the moment, and we, so we think the power of that will continue them going for a while. Um, 
But if the U.S. doesn't show some growth, does, if jobs don't improve, if we don't start to rebound and China continues to do well, and we don't see an, an uptick in interest rates, and the Fed comes out and just says, we are not budging forever, we're going to stay here, and the dollar is going to be the implicit carry currency, we're going to use it to continue to fund the world and keep the world afloat, um, and that would be clear, you know, clear signal from the Fed, um, uh, then, then we're wrong. And obviously, if, if for, forgetting the economic fundamentals, if the dollar comes down and breaks a new low, we do have 70, we're wrong. Um, so there's a technical level we're wrong. And the reason we like this trade is because of, if we're right, the potential upside could be huge. I mean, the last dollar bull market um, went like 50, you know, was up 50, 60 percent from the bottom. Uh, the one before that, it was over a 100 percent move. Um, we know where we're wrong, and it's not that far, seven, six, seven, eight percent. But if we're right, uh, the upside, you know, we're looking, you know, uh, this is a, you know, five, you know, ten time potential winner. So we like those types of setups. Um, but it's a good question because we always think about where we're wrong, no matter what trade it is. Whether it's this big macro trade, we have a reason why we're wrong, or whether it's a, a shorter term, you know. Uh, two, three weekly trade that we, you know, two day or weekly trade, we look at things and ask ourselves, where are we wrong? And I think that's a great question um, that they ask us, Steve, you know this. Um, often, I think, if you've been in this long enough, the first decision you make before you put a trade on should be, how much risk can I take um, in, in this trade? And then think of your upside, where most people that are new to trading think of the upside, don't think of the risk. Um, Sor Soros said this um, early on in some of his writings. Um, he said, you know, all traders should be a lot paranoid, meaning every time they put on a trade, all they should be thinking about is where they're wrong. They should not be looking for information that validates why they're right. They should con only and constantly be looking for information why they're wrong, and I think that keeps you out of trouble. Well, that's true. He kept me out of trouble all my years as a trader. I bet. It does try to be crazy, but it, I guess it does help you, Jack. So uh, um, I, I would second that point. Um, yeah, it just, it just it helps psychologically because you, if you're open to the reasons why you're wrong, you're going to see them. Psychologically, if you're trying to look for information to validate why you're right, you're going to miss the negative information coming in, um, and you just won't see it, and then you'll get blindsided. So there, there are there's, so there's some real psychological reasoning why you should, you know. Um, think that way. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.